Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back to break down uh, the wild card weekend NFL slate. This will be the first look. I'll have another look either Thursday. It'll probably end up being Thursday. I'll take another look at it. Uh, and that'll probably be the final video unless I get one up Saturday morning. Uh, because Friday I have I have work. It's the one day I work this week. Uh, and so probably won't get it up Friday. Um, I'll have a breakdown of NBA on Friday, but I probably won't get an NFL one up unless it's really late, and I almost don't want to do that to you guys, so it'll probably be up Thursday. So let's hop into this. We've got Tennessee and KC to start off with. Um, actually, I'm too used to NBA. We got We go position by position for NFL. Okay, so we've got the quarterbacks to start off here. Uh, we've got Jared Goff at the top, probably the safest quarterback. Uh, and then you got Cam Newton against a tough Saints defense, probably won't go there. Breeze just isn't throwing enough for 6,400. Alex Smith at 63. I just don't want to play 63 for Alex Smith. I mean, he's been fine. He's probably going to get you there against Tennessee, but I'm just not going to play him. Uh, may change later in the week. Uh, Matt Ryan, one of my favorite plays. They should be down in this game, I expect. Um, but who knows? They, they might. Atlanta, definitely the dog in this game, but I do really like Matt Ryan. Um, but I don't know if I'll go there as well. Blake Bortles, a little overpriced at 6K. I think it's a Leonard Fournette game. Uh, and so my play is Marcus Mariota at 5,500. Has not been good all year. Has not really met value at 5,500 all year. But it's the playoffs. You got to win. You, you got to kind of... I'm hoping they just take the training wheels off and let him go. Because um, they have been like babying him all year. And so I'm hoping they, they let it they let it fly this this week. Um, I mean, there's a chance that they just they get conservative, they get cute, and they lose this game by 40 because they don't want Marcus Mariota to throw the ball or rush. I mean, it's wild card weekend. Gonna have to take some risks. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of it. I'm just gonna take the risk on Marcus Mariota at 5500. He really allows you to get some places. You'll see. Um, opposed to going to, like, Drew Brees or Alex Smith or something like that. Tyra Taylor, interesting at 4,700. They should get down in this game, and he should have to throw. Um, should have some rushing upside in this game as well. I would expect around seven attempts in this game rushing um, because of how or how Jacksonville plays. And at 4,700, he needs only about 14 points to really hit mediocre value, which I think he can do. Uh, so I have a lot of interest in Tyrod as well. Moving on to running backs, we got Todd Gurley at the top at 9,700. If you can fit him in, I do really like him this weekend. And so for that reason, I am going to put him in because um, I am able to afford him in this lineup. Um, my favorite, though, running back on the weekend is Leonard Fournette. Should see 20-plus carries, I would assume, in this matchup uh, against an awful run defense in Buffalo. Um yeah, I just I think Leonard Fournette gets it done at 7,400 this week. It's pretty. It's as simple as that. I think he gets it done this week. I think he gets in the end zone. I think he catches some balls out of the backfield. I just really like Leonard Fournette this week, so he will be locked and loaded into my lineups. Moving on to more running backs here. Christian McCaffrey, interesting, but probably won't go there. Devontae Freeman is really interesting. He pretty much took all of the receptions last week, had nine on 11 targets um which is just insane did not do well in the run game tevin coleman didn't do much last week as well um he saw 11 carries as well but also did absolutely not they had the they, they both go 11 for 23 it's kind of funny they both went 11 for 23 oh that's hilarious um if i'm gonna play either of them i probably play tevin coleman um and you just hope he gets a touchdown, really. You hope he gets a, a couple of nice care, catches, and you hope he gets in the end zone. Because other than that, he's probably not meeting value because he's not going to get the rushing. Um, these were all with Freeman out. Uh, he's just not going to get the rushing. So that's that's the issue. You just got to hope he catches some balls and gets in the end zone. But I do like him as a deep tournament play. Not even deep, just a tournament play. I don't know if I can go there and cash. DeMarco Murray is still questionable. Um... I, 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 there's like no new news on him so we'll see if he's able to go even if he's not i doubt i go to derrick henry um 
And so that kind of that kind of does it. You can I like Mark Ingram at 69. He's going to see the exact same workload as Alvin Kamara, but he's $1700 cheaper than Alvin Kamara. Now Kamara has like higher touchdown equity in that offense and he had the re, 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 ditch the return touchdown. So he had 24 last week. I'm ditching. He's not going to he's not returning a touchdown in the playoffs. If he does, I lose and that's fine. But Take that out, it's 24, okay? And he scored the touchdown. So take that out, it's 18. Okay, take out the touchdowns, it's 18. Mark Ingram scored 9.4 with no touchdowns. If he gets one of those touchdowns, he scores 15.4, and it becomes a whole lot closer. Um, for $1,400 less, a 15.4 against an 18.4, I would take Mark Ingram. Um, and so it's just kind of, does Mark Ingram get in the end zone? Does he have a two-touchdown game like he did against the Jets? He's not going to see a whole lot of carries. He's going to see three to four to five, maybe a sixth reception because it's the playoffs. Um, that's what you're going to see out of him. And so it's just kind of, what are you, what are you going to do with Mark Ingram against Alvin Kamara? Uh, in cash games, I'll probably avoid Kamara, and I'd probably play Mark Ingram. I, I know it's a risky business, but if LaShawn McCoy sits... Um, he'll be a close call for this weekend. If he goes ahead and sits, I'm probably all in on Tyrod Taylor. Um, and then I would probably look at, hold on, Buffalo. I would probably look at, um, Murphy here, Marcus Murphy. He saw seven attempts last week, caught two targets. Um, and at 3,700, if Shady is unable to go, he really opens things up. I'll build a quick lineup with with him after this just to show you, but right now I'm going to assume Shady plays so we get a different lineup. Moving on to wide receivers, Julio Jones is my favorite play this weekend. Um, I think they feed him the ball. Now, that didn't work all that well last week when he was 70% owned, and, but he's still got 11 targets. If I'm getting a, If you can sign me up for 11 Julio Jones targets, I will take it and I will live with what ever happens if he scores me 10 point if he scores me four points and he got 11 targets yeah i'll be disappointed but i won't be upset i will have a gpp lineup with julio jones because i think he gets 12 13 targets this week tyreek i'm not playing michael thomas he still has that hamstring i know he had a really nice he had a, not a really nice he almost had a really nice game last week if he gets six more yards at six it's 19 he had to get another catch so it's 20 it'd be 20 points for him last week um so, I, I like Michael Tom, but I'm not playing him at 7,800. Tyreek Hill is one of my favorite plays at 6,800. Um, he's only going to see six, four to six targets, or four to six receptions, but obviously Tyreek Hill has explosion available to him. So, I do really like him. I'm not sure I'll go there. Um, the mid-range, I do like guys like Sanu and Cooper Cup, Devin Funchess. Um, even though he'll get Marcus Lattimore, I still like Devin Funchess as a red zone target. Robert Woods, I really like. Sammy Watkins, I really like. But I'm not getting to any of those guys. The first guy I really get to is Rashard Matthews at 4,900. Now, people are going to look at his box scores and be like, well, he's been all over the place. But Jacksonville, tough matchup against Ramsey and Boye. Rams, tough matchup. 49ers, easier matchup. He did really well. Arizona, tough matchup against Patrick Peterson. Didn't do well. Pittsburgh, pretty good matchup. 25.3. Cincinnati, not a great matchup, but not a horrible one. Put up 10 points. That wouldn't kill you this weekend in wild card for cash games. Uh, Baltimore, tough matchup, but he put up 17. Cleveland, that's when J that's when uh, Jason McCourty was like on fire. So tough matchup. Indianapolis divisional game, still put up 11. Not bad. Miami, kind of. This was kind of before he got really going. Uh, these were the first couple weeks of the season, so don't put too much stock into that. But pretty much good matchups. He's done all right. Bad matchups. He's done awful. But for 4,900, not a bad deal. But I'll go ahead and take him out. I have him in my lineup now, but we'll take him out just for purposes of this video. So we come down here, and Eric Decker, 3,500, has been seeing six, five, six targets. I'll take the Rams' 10 targets out of this. Five to six targets. If he gets five catches for 50 yards, that's 10 points. That's value. So I uh, pretty much have no, much, no, not much to talk about on Eric Decker. I should hit value. Um, and if he gets in the end zone, it's just explosion. Albert Wilson, probably the fourth target on the team, but he comes in at 3,300. Ignore the game against Denver. Just don't look at that. Just ignore it. But eight targets, seven targets, five, seven, one against Denver, uh, two. But that was kind of, let's look, seven through weeks, 12 through uh, 16. 
Uh, so seven to eight targets. Five targets he might get there as well. He doesn't need a whole lot to get there. I really like Albert Wilson this week at 3,300, uh, especially if we don't get any value. He's probably the premier value play with Eric Decker. And so we're starting to get a little bit more money. We move on to another wide receiver. Uh, I do like D.D. Westbrook at 4400 but for that, I'd probably just pay up for Richard Matthews. Um, there's some other guys down here. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin at 3500 has a lot of touchdown equity, and if he scores, he gets in the end zone. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll meet value. So he's interesting as well at 3500 They should be down, and they should have to throw the ball. Uh, but we'll go ahead and throw my boy Rashard Matthews in there for now. Moving on to tight end, there's only a couple guys that I have interest in, and that's Charles Clay and Delaney Walker. I'm going to play Charles Clay because I already have two Titans receivers in here. I don't want the whole Titans offense with how weird Mariota's been this year. So we'll go ahead and play Charles Clay. Um, he's been seeing a lot of targets, and even against Jacksonville, uh, I think he should still see 8 to 10 targets, probably 7 to 10 targets. Um, with with six five or six being the floor uh, but I think he still finds his way to value this week uh, pretty simple a tight end I do like let me say I do like Travis Kelsey but I don't think I can fit him as my primary tight end and then you come to defense so I do really like the Jags defense at 4400 but you can do some nutty things and go away from the Jags defense the Rams defense is really nice of value um, at 2700 I, I really do, it's weird, because I really do like the Falcons, but I really do like the Rams defense. Another interesting play is the Titans defense, all the way down here at 23, Panthers defense at 21, and the Falcons defense at 2000. I mean, if they get, if these teams score anything, uh, they'll, they'll be on, like, major, the, the Saints defense, I have a feeling, is going to be popular after what Cam did last week. Um, I think Cam comes out and plays a lot better than he does last week. Um, that's just kind of a gut feel. Uh, he hasn't played extremely well against New Orleans. It's just a gut feel that I don't think he wants to go out with two extremely bad games in a row. But if you come down here, I think my favorite is the Titans. It kind of goes against the correlation, but I'll go with the Panthers just for just for the sake. It gives you 9,600 left. That brings in Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt, Julio Jones. Um, if you go with Mark Ingram... It leaves you twenty-seven hundred. Come off of Richard Matthews. You got seventy-six hundred dollars. You can go with a Tyreek Hill. I mean, it really opens it up for you. And if you want to get it opened up even more, say we get, uh, let's see here, we get Marcus Murphy at running back. You can plug him in there. You got four thousand dollars now. If I go ahead and go to Julio Jones, who I love, and then I can come up from like a Charles Clay to my guy Delaney Walker, and I can get off of Eric Decker to like a 5600. I can get to Muhammad Sanu, uh, Ted Ginn. I do like Ted Ginn a lot, so you can go to like a Ted Ginn. That really helps. So hopefully we get Lashawn McCoy out. I don't think Buffalo beats Jacksonville anyway, so I don't think it really matters <laughs> uh, whether I would I would like to see Buffalo win, but um, I don't think they do. So I think the Jags get it done. So. That's kind of an early look, guys. I'm going to dig in, do a lot more research, see what I come up with, um, and then I'll hit you guys with another video later. But that's where I stand right now. Um, really love Mariota, Gurley, Fournette, Albert Wilson, Delaney Walker, Clay, and that's about all that I have like in love with right now. But, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.